everyone, no poem today, so we're looking at uh, Eden Rock. We are going to start annotating in this lesson. Um, we're going to focus on the first part of the poem, um, as we always do, and the context. Okay, so as usual, top or the bottom of your anthology page, you're going to jot some of these down. Um, some of them are more important than others, and I'll try and make that clear. So, born in Cornwall in 1917, not bothered. Uh, became a school teacher, not bothered. <laughs> Causey was a very religious man. I am bothered about that. He was a very religious man. Um, and a lot of his poetry includes um, references to Christianity and religious symbols. Um, and that's the case with the one that we're looking at now. Um, his work is, is quite simple. Um, I don't think that's really important, but often he's quite an accessible poet. Um, I think that this side is more important. So his father died in 1924 in the First World War. He didn't die in battle, he became unwell and um, came home and, and died of kind of injuries a couple of years later um, when Causey was pretty young, six or seven. So his main memories of his dad are likely to be of him as an, an unwell man. Um, and that's going to be an important kind of thing that, that he subtly references in the poem, I think. Um, he was brought up by his mother, there was just the two of them, um, and when she was old he became her carer and he cared for her for six years before she died. Um, he was older when he wrote this poem, he was in his late 60s um, when he wrote this poem. Um, he has now died um, and in a lot of respects I think it's important that he wrote it in his late 60s. I think this is a reflection on his own mortality and the own, his own feelings about death, um, particularly in relation to his parents. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to pause the PowerPoint and click that link um, and listen to the poem. It's him reading the poem, and I think it's quite it's quite quite cute. Um, you can purchase it. That's a, an MP4 that you could buy. I think it's about eighty p. You might want to download that and listen to it on your iPod. People still have iPods anymore. Who knows? Okay, so hopefully you've managed to listen to Causey reading the poem. Uh, we're going to go through it again before we look at and what it's all about and start to annotate it. You know, you should know by now that I think you have to read the poem several times in order to really get to the heart of what it is that the poet is trying to say and definitely worth doing before we start to unpick any language. They are waiting for me somewhere beyond Eden Rock. My father, 25, in the same suit of genuine Irish tweed, his terrier Jack, still two years old and trembling at his feet. My mother, 23, in a sprigged dress, drawn at the waist, ribbon in her straw hat, has spread the stiff white cloth over the grass. Her hair, the colour of wheat, takes on the light. She pours tea from a thermos, the milk straight from an old HP sauce bottle, a screw of paper for a cork. Slowly sets out the same three plates, the tin cups painted blue. The sky whitens, as if lit by three suns. My mother shades her eyes and looks my way over the drifted stream. My father spins a stone along the water. Leisurely, they beckon to me from the other bank. I hear them call. See where the stream path is. Crossing is not as hard as you might think. I had not thought that it would be like this. Okay, so what's the poem about? Um, in this poem, the speaker imagines his parents are in heaven. Um, they are younger than they were when they died and they're in their 20s in the prime of their lives. Um, they're having a picnic and they're just waiting for their son who is the speaker um, and they are waiting for the time where he'll be able to join them in heaven and they'll all be together again. Um, there are really strong religious ideas throughout this poem um, which link contextually to the fact that Causey and his family are Christians um, and there's a reflection on human mortality and what happens to us when we die. Okay, so we're going to work through the poem, as we always do, um, line by line. I've got a code of the annotations to try and help you stay sort of clear on what I'm talking about. You should be trying to make notes in your anthology um, and try and make them as detailed as you can. So first, you're going to look at this opening line. They're waiting for me somewhere beyond Eden Rock. Um, so last lesson, we were looking at that opening line and, and the title um, and, and some of the ambiguity around it, some of the ways in which it's a little bit vague, a little bit unclear. 
Um, and I think on the first re reading, the use of the pronoun they does create questions. Um, who are they? Why are they waiting? Lots of ambiguity in that opening line. Where's Eden Rock? Why are they beyond it? Lots of questions. And that's okay that we have questions at this point because later on in the poem we're going to have those questions answered. Um, but I think it's an intentional choice by the poet, by Causley, to make us have se several questions um, after reading that opening line. Um, I think there's something important about the fact that it's written in present tense. We've seen that in a lot of these poems, a sense of present tense giving us um, a sense that this is an ongoing thing. Um, I think this is, Ranbury writes this in his late 60s, they are waiting for me, is ongoing, they will continue to wait. Um, they will continue to be thinking of him and there for him um, for as long as it takes. Um, and I think there's a sense that of, of the continuity of that, that, that will always be there. That's, that's a fixed thing. They are always waiting. Um, as we move through the poem, we realise that this is a poem about um, the death of his parents and where he imagines they go. Um, so Eden Rock becomes a kind of heaven place that he thinks they've gone to um, and hopes to get into himself and again that leads to the context because we know that he's a very religious man and therefore this is likely to be a belief that he has and finds comfort in um, there's something really quite comforting and reassuring about the idea that when people die um, they go to heaven and I think having that Christian belief um, must be very very comforting for people who, who lose relatives and people that they're close to um, he focuses first on his on his father. My father, twenty five. Um, I always wonder if this is him looking at a photograph because we know that his his dad was unwell um, for much of his life, and that many of his memories will be rooted in that experience of him being sick. Um, so I think potentially he's looking at a photograph, and um, when his father's younger, maybe before he's, he's gone off to fight in the, in the war. Um, so it may not be a memory. It might be a photograph. I think. It, He's picking him at 25 because that's the time where he wasn't unwell, he wasn't injured, he wasn't he was a strong man maybe at that point. That's how he likes to imagine him not as the unwell man that he goes on to become. Um, so potentially this is a photograph, not sure. Poems are often amb like ambiguous and that's kind of intentional, I think. Um, but his father is there beyond Eden Rock and he's 25 and he's young. Um, he's in the same suit of genuine Irish tweed, so he's wearing a suit. Um, I would guess that this wasn't um, an everyday thing. Maybe this is a sense that he's dressed up for the occasion. This is an important occasion um, to be at Eden Rock waiting for him is, you know, a, a big moment. Um, it seems like a branded suit because he's got this suit of genuine Irish tweed. And I always think they're capitalising. It might be a gentle mocking, like maybe he's heard about this suit a lot, or his dad used to talk about this suit, or his mum used to talk about the suit after his dad had died. It's genuine Irish tweed, did you know? That sense that it's uh, yeah, something that they, they, they spoke about often. I think it's a sense that this is quality, this is maybe his best suit, his finest suit, that he's dressed up for this occasion. He's in Eden Rock, he's waiting for his son, and he's dressed up um, because this is important, a significant moment. And then we get the introduction of this dog, this terrier, Jack. Um, and it's two years old and it's trembling at his feet. Um, I think this would be a sort of a positive memory, a family pet from his childhood. Um, I suspect um, that Jack is two because Jack would have been two when his father was 25. I think that there's that sense of the real world in it, even though they're in heaven and they're able to kind of be younger. Then, they, then he might remember them being particularly with his mom, um, and they're able to be different to how they were um, in their lives. That you know they're at this sort of this moment of you know the, the peak of their youth. Um, but I think there's a realism with it. So I think when he's at 25, the family pet Jack was two. Um, the verb trembling forces the reader to accept that this isn't a photograph. We thought maybe it could have been a photograph, but with the movement introduced, there's this definite sense that it couldn't be a photograph. This must be um, something real or something that he's actually experiencing, not just a photograph that he's looking at. Um, I always wonder if the dog is trembling because um, maybe his dad was quite a dominant man 
like a quite a traditional old fashioned father. Um and maybe he was, you know, his master and he and he was maybe he was um a bit scary to Jack. Um, maybe Jack's scared because he didn't know where he is. I don't know. It's, it's, it's more ambiguity, isn't it? Um, I, I think that for Corsi, these might be things that he remembers from his childhood. Um, but potentially this is an age that his parents have chosen. I, look, the question is, do do you choose the age you, you are in heaven or is this just Corsi's idea? Um, like I say, they're in their, their youth, in the prime of their lives. Um, and maybe that's why that's the moment that's that's how old you are in heaven because that's the best time i don't know okay second stanza so we started off with the father now we're moving on to his mother my mother 23. um this completes that day that we had in that opening the opening line of the poem they are waiting for me um that's finished now because here it is it's the mother and the father um, she's slightly younger than him, 23, again, youthful, like the, the prime of your life, maybe, the, the point where you're healthiest, maybe happiest, I don't know. Um, and again, she's slightly younger, the dad's 25, she's 23, and I think that's because that would have been the, the real age gap between them. Um, I suspect that the father is the one who dictates the age, because obviously he died very young, and therefore he couldn't be there at 50 because he didn't make it to 50. So the young age of the father um, then connects to the young age of the mother. Again, similarly, she is smartly dressed. She's in a sprigged dress drawn at the waist and a ribbon in her straw hat. Um, it's, a, it's a nice dress. Um, she, she's dressed up. Um, maybe this is a, a memory that when his father wore that suit, his mother wore this dress. Maybe it's a photograph. Again, we're still un, un, unsure as to why they are this age or, or whether it's real, real in the sense that he's imagining it or whether it's heaven or whether it's a photograph. But because we have the sense of movement that comes in, we have to accept that it's not just a photograph, although this may be drawn from a photograph, if that makes sense. Okay, so... Again, this sense of movement that's coming in. She's dressed up nicely and she's spread out a stiff white cloth over the grass. So there's a sense that they are settling down to have a picnic. Now, I always think a picnic is, um, is you're never like on a lunch break. I've only got half an hour. Let's go and have a picnic. That's not what we think about. It's not what we associate with picnics. So picnics is about a time where you haven't got anything else to do and you can be really slow and you can take your time. That's exactly what they're doing. This is leisurely. This is pleasant. They're waiting for him. But there's no rush. There's no sense that the waiting is going to end shortly, because otherwise they might not have the picnic. Um, so that this is they are waiting for him, but without any real sense that he has to hurry up or that it's going to happen soon, because they're just having a picnic and they're just sitting down and it's kind of leisurely. Um, I don't always go totally into the colours. Does uh, that is it a meme where it's like? The curtains were blue. What your English teacher thinks, the blue shows that they're all upset, that sort of thing. I don't always go English, full English teacher on colours, but I'm going to go a little bit English teacher here on the colour. I think the white cloth possibly could be a link to religion because this is his mother who was religious and a, a poet who is religious talking about heaven. And therefore the white might represent the lack of sin that his mum didn't sin, pure Christian. Did, it, did everything she should have done and that's why she's able to be beyond Eden Rock in heaven um, because she's got no sin. I don't think that's, I've taken it too far. I don't think I've been too English teachery with that, but you can let me know. And then lastly, her hair, the colour of wheat, takes on the light. Um, I always think that this description is a little bit more detailed than, his, than the description of his father. So in the in the first stanza, the description tells us what he's wearing, um, and that he's with this dog. Whereas this one, there's lots of little details about his mother, um, and I think that possibly reflects the fact that he lost his father at an early age, and therefore that closeness that he had to his mum would have been amplified or accentuated because she was his only parent. There was just the two of them, um, and he clearly really loves his mum. And we know that kind of he cares for her when she was old before she died 
Um, I think possibly part of the reason for wanting to make his parents 23 and 25 is not just because his dad didn't live a long life and therefore it kind of needed to be relatively young, but also because if you'd been a carer for your parents, it might be nice to think about what they were like when they were younger, before they needed that, before you had to do those sort of jobs for them or whatever it takes to look after them. It might be nice to picture them in their youth and in their prime and, you know, full of full of life and healthy and all of those kind of things. Um, I also think that there's a sense in that, particularly in that line about the hair taking on the light. Um, it always suggests to me a halo that there's this angelic connotation to his mother. Again, that links to that, that religion that you know that he has in his life and his parents had, um, and portrays her as being like an angel to him. Again, no sins. She's in heaven. She's earned her way there. Uh, next lesson, we're going to finish off the poem. will probably take a little bit longer because there's uh, just over half left to go. And we're going to look at the structure. Let me know if you've got any questions about this.